The Kraken G10 is probably the third time that NZXT has really blown me away with an inexpensive product that just makes the lives of system builders easier. So the first one was their little USB internal header hub that allowed you to add additional headers if you didn't have enough on your motherboard. This was back in the days when most boards had like two or even one internal header. The second one was the grid, which is a little fan power hub that allows you to simplify your cable management and simplify your fan speed management. And the third Third is this. What this does is it takes your existing, there's many of them on the market, Asetek based liquid cooler, a CPU liquid cooler, and allows you to mount it to your graphics card, effectively water cooling your video card, but at a fraction of the cost of what it would what it would cost you to go with a full custom liquid cooling solution for your card, which is really the only other option out there for video card water cooling. Inside the excellent but completely unnecessary uh, soft closed cell foam packaging, I mean none of this stuff is uh, fragile or anything, we find the bracket itself which is available in black, white and red. We find a backplate that has a variety of different mounting holes. We also find a variety of mounting hardware to go through it. We find a 92 millimeter fan which actually just screws onto the bracket itself and then blows air directly at the back of the video card where the VRM and actually some of the memory typically are in order to make sure that the card doesn't run overly warm. And finally, we find an instruction manual with some included zip ties. This is a nice touch just because, you know, cable management is never a bad thing. So why would you want to liquid cool your graphics card? Well, number one is it gives you something to do with your, you know, your old Asetek CPU liquid cooler that you're not using anymore because frankly they're just not that great for CPU cooling. CPUs kick out a lot more heat than GPUs overall. Number two is the fact that GPUs genuinely perform better if you're able to keep them running cooler. GPU Boost 2.0 and AMD's latest power tune will actually turn up the frequency of your graphics card higher if you are able to keep it cooler. Now the only things to watch out for here are things like case compatibility. You're going to have to have positions in the case for fan mounts that are either 120 millimeter, 90 millimeter, like the H90 from Corsair, as well as the Kraken X40 from NZXT. And you're going to have to have ample tubing length to reach your graphics card. The last thing to watch out for is that just because a fan fits somewhere doesn't mean that you're actually going to be able to screw a radiator in there. Sometimes screwdriver clearance is going to be more of an issue for you than the actual fan clearance. So NCXT has some compatibility charts for cases. A lot of their cases are compatible with it, so go check that out. The other thing that they have compatibility lists for is coolers. Now you'd expect NZXT to just say, oh well it's compatible with the crack in this and the crack in that. No, they're not. They're coming out and they're saying, look, here's all the coolers from all the brands that will work with our product. Go nuts. Use someone else's cooler with that and I think that's very cool of them. And then card compatibility is being updated constantly but it's compatible with like the latest stuff because of its very modular design. So GTX 780, uh, 780 Ti, Titan, uh, 290, 290 90X, all of these are supported and you can check out NZXT's site for some, you know, updates in the future about that. So without further ado, let's get this baby installed in something and we're going to take a crack at the Radeon R9 290 and see how much better it can perform with our normal standard overclock. So just letting it ramp up as high as it can with better cooling versus the stock cooler. Installing the G10 really wasn't that bad. It's pretty daunting when you first look at it because it's very new. And when I first started strapping it to the card, I was kind of getting frustrated. But when I stopped trying to align the words properly due to my OCD, I found it actually to be fairly easy. If you there's there's a specific way you're supposed to have the tubes going, they're supposed to be kind of aligned near the top of the card so they can be routed more easily. And I was trying to have them turn towards the fan, which doesn't really work just because of how the name would have been aligned up. Performance wise, the graphs pretty much say it all. We saw this coming with an R9 290. We knew that water cooling it would help a lot because it got so freaking hot. So once we strap a water cooler on it, like we just did, we knew we would see improvements like this, but it's still kind of surprising to see how much it improved. I can tell you right now, even though it's not on the graph, our 780 benchmarks, which used to be above the R9 290, are now below once it's water cooled, although that's not entirely fair because the 780 isn't water cooled itself.
Well, we're back to me guys here. We're gonna cheat a little bit. We unfortunately didn't have time to install it in an actual case, so we just ran it on the test bench. But if you wanna see what it looks like in a case, here's some footage of the last time we were in NZXT suite and we were actually checking this out with not one, but two Kraken G10s installed in a single chassis. So yes, guys, it is SLI and Crossfire compatible as long as you have adequate spacing between your PCI Express slots and you don't need a ton of additional expansion cards. So what is there left to say about it? Well, it makes your graphics graphics card perform better, whether you're overclocking or not in many cases, because stuff like the R9-290X and the R9-290 actually throttle a fair bit, even at stock speeds. It makes your graphics card run cooler, which will lead to better life, and it's relatively inexpensive, especially if you have an older liquid cooling unit just kind of lying around already. Even a 120 millimeter liquid cooler, although I prefer a 140 millimeter, is going to be more than adequate for cooling something like a GPU. So this is a fantastic product at a low price, and I think it's fantastic. Thank you for checking out this video. Video. like it if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment if you have feelings that just can't be expressed by thumbs up or thumbs down, and finally, don't forget to subscribe.